started hearing whispers about Thrawn's return as heir to the Empire. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is The Way. Star Wars just announced three new movies all taking place in three different eras of the timeline, so we'll break it all down, revealing pretty much what the future of the franchise is going to be the next couple of years. So if you've been wondering about where they're taking the franchise outside of the Mandoverse, they've just told us. And it all takes place in very different parts of the timeline. So if you're brand new to the channel, of course I'll do videos for everything. Be sure to subscribe to get the videos. It's just the beginning of Star Wars Celebration. There's a ton more stuff they're going to reveal the next couple of days, like who's playing Grand Admiral Thrawn. I think we've already figured that out though, and what's going on with the next two years of Star Wars just in general. I will start my operations here and pull the rebels apart piece by piece. They'll be the architects of their own destruction. There are also a ton of brand new trailers. I just did an Ahsoka trailer, so I'll link that at the end of this and down in the description below because the first big movie that they announced, and it's a really big deal, is Dave Filoni directing the Mandalorian Thrawn movie that will tie together all the overarching heir to the Empire Grand Admiral Thrawn plots during this part of the Mandoverse timeline. They literally referenced Heir to the Empire, the original Thrawn trilogy, during the Ahsoka trailer. So my bet is right now, early theory, is that they'll call that Thrawn movie Heir to the Emperor, like Star Wars Heir to the Empire. This is Dave Filoni actually talking about that movie. One of the terms we use is, you know, the war between the New Republic and uh, the Remnant Empire. So we're going to see, you know, you need a conflict. And I'm uh, you know, just kind of looking at a lot of the things that were written over the years in various expanded universe projects, trying not just to look at what John and I did, but we're looking at what was done kind of historically in the time period as a guide. I think for, you know, generations of Star Wars fans before the era of, uh, you know, episode 7, 8, 9, that was what, what we saw as well, the post turn of the Jedi era before. when you're talking about uh, story and characters in the expanded universe. So there's a, a treasure of things to to uh, draw from, not just within our own series, but uh, in, the, in the bigger galaxy. Notice how Dave Filoni is explaining that they're mining a lot of the expanded universe that they set up in the 90s in that original Thrawn trilogy, the heir to the Empire trilogy, basically. Because when Disney bought Star Wars, they basically just turned everything into Legends canon and said, no, no, that's not canon anymore, all this expanded universe stuff, we're going to skip over it and do completely new stuff. But if you were around during the very early 90s, like a lot of us, you'll probably remember that we did not think that there were ever going to be more Star Wars movies after Return of the Jedi. We thought that that was it. So when the expanded universe came along, the Thrawn trilogy, that was basically our Star Wars sequel. And it is still an amazing story. If you haven't read those books, I'd recommend you go back and you read them. That all started long before George Lucas had ever announced anything approaching the prequels. He hadn't even started work on them yet. So now in present day, Dave Filoni, John Favreau are basically just taking all that stuff and turning it into movies in live action series. And it's all playing out in The Mandalorian, the Ahsoka series, Skeleton Crew, all the other connected series during this part of the timeline. We're calling it the Mandoverse. But the Thrawn movie is meant to be like their version of the Mandalorian Endgame, like the culmination of all the plots during this part of the timeline. But it will not be the end of all the shows in this part of the timeline. They'll continue, but it'll just be the culmination, kind of like the way the Avengers Endgame was a culmination for the MCU, and then they continued making Marvel movies after that. It's just that now, with the announcement of these different new movies, different parts of the timeline, they're going to be branching out to other parts of the timeline, which we assume that they would always do. So, for example, Ahsoka is a Mandalorian spin-off. I just did a trailer for that series. That'll be the next place we see Grand Admiral Thrawn. He was featured very prominently in the trailer, or the back of his head was. As I was making this video, they literally confirmed all our theories that it is Lars Mikkelsen coming back to voice the character. He did the voice during Star Wars Rebels. He was fantastic. He's already been a longtime fantastic actor in live-action stuff. Most of you probably remember him from the Sherlock series with Benedict Cumberbatch. Everything's available for a prize. You making me an offer? A Christmas present. And what are you giving me for Christmas, Mr. Holmes? And yes, he is the brother of Maz Mikkelsen, whose character is constructing the Death Star in a different part of the timeline. Although his character would have been around during that part of the timeline too, but Thrawn didn't really have anything to do with the construction of the Death Star. He was working on different projects during that part of the timeline. We'll be talking a lot about Thrawn this year, between the Mandalorian series and what they're doing with him on Ahsoka. Those episodes are coming out in August. Of course, I'll do more videos for that when we get more footage, we learn more about the series. 
But right now in The Mandalorian, because that series is connected, they just screened season three, episode seven, a couple days early. And the last two episodes, without giving away spoilers, are total bangers, and they totally save the best for last. A lot of people complaining about what the overarching plot of The Mandalorian is during season three. Well, we find out pretty quickly during episode seven and episode eight. And they'll use those episodes to push directly into this Grand Admiral Thrawn plot that happens on Ahsoka and then continues on the other series and future seasons and into the Thrawn movie. So like I said, they're basically doing Star Wars Heir to the Empire with the Thrawn movie, but they're swapping some of the characters in like Grogu wasn't in the original Thrawn trilogy. Here's the thing though, that movie will probably be the last of the new three that they just announced just because there'll be so many more new seasons of Ahsoka, The Mandalorian. There's just a lot of story that they have to do and they just started to set up Thrawn. The actual first Star Wars movie that's coming out is supposed to be Christmas 2025 and the reports are that it will be the one Damon Lindelof was writing set during the New Jedi Order 15 years after the rise of Skywalker. They confirmed that it will follow Daisy Ridley's Rey who is returning 15 years later. She'll have become a Jedi Master and is basically doing the same thing that Luke Skywalker is doing right now on The Mandalorian trying to create her New Jedi Order with a little bit of help from the sacred text, which she yoinked when she left Luke Skywalker. So those were not burned when Yoda burned the old Jedi tree. When they start releasing footage for that in the next year or two, when we start getting trailers for it, we can start talking about the fallacy of the Jedi Order and how it kind of grew stagnant in one of the reasons why Luke Skywalker's Jedi Order failed. When they say Rey's new Jedi Order, I think the whole idea is that she's gonna be basing on a slightly different concept. So it won't be the exact same thing just over and over and over. If she were to do the exact same things, teach the exact same lessons as the previous Jedi, that'd just be repeating the mistakes of the past and it would just lead to their downfall again. Here's the thing though, and a lot of you realize this immediately when they said this further forward in the timeline, Grogu would be close to the same age that Yoda was when Yoda became a Jedi Master, meaning that Grogu would be hitting peak Grogu force powers around this period. He would long since have become a full Mandalorian, he probably has some crazy Beskar armor too. He'd be as large physically as Yoda and he could speak basically normally like Yoda and Yaddle even though only Yoda spoke that backwards speech style. If you didn't watch Tales of the Jedi, we got a whole bunch of Yaddle backstory that explained what happened to her during the prequels. The council is leaving for Naboo. The funeral is to be held there. She was voiced by Bryce Dallas Howard who directs a lot of episodes. That just implies that when Grogu eventually starts speaking normally, he'll speak like everybody else. The thing about Grogu appearing in movies further forward in the time like an older Grogu, John Favreau and Dave Filoni have been very, very cagey about whether they'd let Grogu appear in other people's movies because that movie would basically drop between seasons of Ahsoka, The Mandalorian, like before the Thrawn movie comes out. And if you see an older Grogu just kicking ass 15 years after the rise of Skywalker, just being a total badass, it would kind of spoil what his fate is during this earlier part of the Mandalorian timeline. Remember, Yoda's race lives for up to 900 years and he wouldn't have even hit 100 when that new Jedi Order movie starts. They didn't say if they're bringing Finn back for any more force training or if Poe, the other characters from the new trilogy would return. My assumption is that a few of them will, but mostly it'll be new characters and that's why they're setting it a full 15 years after the rise of Skywalker. If that movie does well, like in success, they'd set up a new trilogy based on the new Jedi Order that would just follow those characters forward. I think one of the reasons why the new trilogy failed is because they didn't have a plan going into it. Like they didn't know how they were going to end the trilogy. And it sounds like they fixed that problem heading into the new Jedi Order movie where they know where the story is actually going before they start working on it. One of the other more interesting new movies they announced is they're planning on releasing a James Mangold movie about the dawn of the Jedi set 25,000 years ago. Originally, Dan and Dave from Game of Thrones, you may remember, were developing a trilogy of movies set during this time period, but then they left in disgrace, so good riddance. James Mangold picked up the concept and he announced that he's going to write and direct the movie, so it'll be his original story that he's writing for the movie thinking about what kind of genre movie within Star Wars I'd like to make, and I thought about a kind of biblical epic, um, like a Ten Commandments and a dawning of the Force. Where did the Force come from? When did we discover it? When did we know how to use it? Um, and um, a story just started developing, and, and with the wonderful help of all the brilliant um, canonites and brilliant um, historians of Star Wars in the timeline, we came up with kind of an incredible story to tell about the dawning of the Force um, 25,000 years before, um, before, before this guy made his appearance. So the, the, it's an exciting story and I can't wait to tell it. 
the idea of where it all started to make a kind of Star Wars Zero, if you will. Where was the Force born? To me, a movie always has to have a question to answer. Some singular thing that you can say it's about. Not just connecting plot of who built this when and who's going to defeat, but what's it about? And to me, this is about discovery. He just finished doing Indiana Jones 5 Dial of Destiny, so he'll probably talk more about the Dawn of the Jedi movie after Indiana Jones comes out. It'll take him at least three years to get that movie out. So at current pace, I think that's why Star Wars is fine, only releasing a movie every two years. That gives them till 2027 to release this first Dawn of the Jedi movie. They have covered that part of the timeline extensively before in the Legends canon, and there have been references to the original Jedi in the new canon during the Mandalorian, the sequel trilogy, even during Star Wars Rebels, which they're now doing in live action during the Ahsoka series. Everybody hoping to see the Bendu show up. If you look at the new official Star Wars timeline, the symbol for that part of the timeline where all those movies and those Disney Plus series will take place is the same symbol that was on the floor of the very first Jedi Temple on Ahch 2 that Luke Skywalker had been living at. The picture is of the being who was the very first Jedi in the black and white coloration on him dividing him was meant to represent the concepts of the light and the dark side of the Force and how those first Jedi believed in a more Bendu-like practice of the Force where they wielded both the dark side and the light side. I am the light. I am the dark. I am the man. It enabled them to wield the Force in a more complete way, be way more powerful than the modern light side Jedi or the modern Sith. But that Dawn of the Jedi franchise, if we're talking about villains, is probably going to be more like a Jedi Civil War type of franchise. If they do sequels to it and they start doing Disney Plus series set in that part of the timeline, essentially they would become their own main villains. What happened in that part of the timeline is there was a schism in that original order and out of that the light side practitioners broke from the dark side practitioners. They fought a bitter civil war, a bunch of people died, eventually they both retreated to different parts of the galaxy and just fully developed their own practice of the force, only wielding either the light side or the dark side. In the new canon, not talking about legends, the very first Jedi Temple was on Ahch 2. After that, you have the schism, the civil war, the dark side, the light side break off and go different ways. The light side practitioners continued calling themselves the Jedi Order and moved the Jedi Temple to Tython, which we saw on the Mandalorian. That's where Grogu used the ruins of the temple to contact Luke Skywalker through the Force. I believe for a brief period, the original Jedi Temple was also on Tython in the legends canon too. While the Jedi Temple was still on Tython, they moved some of the temple to the planet Ossus, which is also from the Legends canon as well, where they kept the Great Jedi Library and they used the planet just as a Jedi retreat. That's where, right now in the timeline, Luke Skywalker chose to create his new Jedi Academy. We saw it during the Book of Boba Fett where he was training Grogu. Eventually, we know Kylo Ren destroys it with the Knights of Ren years later. Then about 4,000 years ago, at the end of the Great Sith War, right at the tail end of the Old Republic era, the Jedi moved the main Jedi Temple to Coruscant, where it remained until Revenge of the Sith. Fun fact too, after Order 66 and Revenge of the Sith, the Emperor turned the Old Jedi Temple into his own personal residence. That's just his twisted sense of humor. Right now it seems like the release plans for the new movies are they're doing the new Jedi Order movie in 2025, then the Dawn of the Jedi movie after that, then the Mandalorian Thrawn Heir to the Empire movie at some point after that. That's why I say they're going to continue to have seasons of the Mandalorian, Ahsoka, Skeleton Crew, other spin-offs before we do the Thrawn Heir to the Empire movie. They could always speed up their release plans for the movies and do one movie per year, but I think when they start out, like right at the start here, it'll be one movie every two years. They might ramp up a little bit later in success if things go well. We're taking baby steps right now. They've had a lot of successes with the different Star Wars series, so I think they want to lean more heavily on that and then ease themselves back into doing Star Wars movies. But for those of you that wanted them to cover earlier parts in the timeline, like the Old Republic era, do series set during that period, set during the Dawn of the Jedi era, it sounds like they do have plans to do that eventually. There were a whole bunch of other trailers and teasers that dropped, so I'll do videos for those as soon as possible this weekend. There was an Acolyte trailer, there was a Star Wars Skeleton Crew trailer, which is also a Mandalorian spinoff. There was also an Andor Season 2 trailer as well too. My full Mandalorian Season 3 Episode 7 video will post next Wednesday after they release it for everyone publicly. Please don't post spoilers for that if you did get a chance to watch it early. Everyone click here for my full Ahsoka trailer video and click here for my Mandalorian Season 3 Episode 7 video. I'll update the link as soon as I post that. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.